Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the OdaFest podcast with me, Nancy. Just Nancy. Just me. It's just me today. Sorry, it's Nancy. Nobody but Nancy. (laughs) But actually, Jay and Bayfar are with me today. So yay, Bayfar gets to be on the show, which I'm pretty excited about because I rarely get a chance to talk to him anymore. He's, well, that's your... He's really freaking That's busy. really dumb because, like, <laughs> you are sort of in close proximity to him a lot of the week. Uh, yeah, it's true. Literally. He works yeah. upstairs in the same building as me. Yeah, and then you come over I to record you podcasts. You do, yeah. and suddenly I feel like I've been really sounds, all that until I realize it's It's the it's proximity you. problem, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. if, you, if you're close and it's easily accessible, you're less likely to do it. It's true. Jay and I used to live, like, a five-minute walk away from each other, and we... That was... The right, time, not a time where we saw each other the least throughout yeah. our lives. Before. Even though they were like fairly available, this is right before the first time we moved in together. Yeah, huh. as well, and it was just like really, sh- yeah, we really did not see each other at all. Nope. So what's it like now that your roomies then? Don't see him at all. Yeah, we, <laughs> huh. so but I, I, know, I have I ha- I'm the one with the weird work schedule. So. Well, I'm really glad we could all be here today together. Yep. Our, so our work schedule is actually hilariously like complimentary in the work <laughs> sense. Yeah, they, they, he will One walk. He literally he will walk home or walk home. He'll arrive home through the door at about like four in the afternoon or so, and then I will be like, "Hey, how's it going?" And then like fifteen minutes later, I will be leaving for work. Well, at least he doesn't miss you by like five minutes, because then you just never see each other. Sure. Sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get too far. We've got some OdaFest news. Yeah, so uh, we're doing something new this year called the Oda Olympics. OdaFest is partnering with the Microsoft Store at Chinook Center this February 29th, which is coming up really quick. This weekend. This weekend. There are five game categories you can play and compete in. Uh, fighting, battle royale, sports, racing, and co-op. You can win tickets to enter in our draw for a variety of great prizes, including two weekend passes to OdaFest 2020. It's free to enter and play, so come drop by on Saturday, see people, support us, have fun, and win something cool. And it's free. (laughs) And you can win things. And it's free. And it's indoors, so if it happens to be really bloody cold, it's something you can do indoors. I didn't put in all like the prizes, but I remember I saw like a fight sticks in there too. So there's some cool gaming peripherals. Um, I think there's also mini prizes. Like it's not just grand prizes, so you can just come by and probably win a little something yeah too. so kind of how it works is there is a grand prize but yeah. then the more events you enter you get tickets and then you can put those tickets towards like essentially like you add them to a raffle for like a prize that you want and they draw one of the tickets out of that that prize's raffle pool. so is it is it a different pool for each prize correct yeah oh. so you pick what you want you can have like it's more like door cover. door prizes if you ever, yeah. but you have to play to to participate and if you participate in every event you get like a couple bonus tickets or something yeah nice what else is what else is coming up, Jay? <laughs> Odafest is coming up. But you know what's happening at Odafest? Well, you can be a part of the Oda Factor. Do you dream of owning the stage? Maybe you're a karaoke star. Now's your chance to win the top position in the spotlight and prove you have the Oda Factor. It's our new or revamped uh Odafest Idol. Uh, yep, competition. Idol, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, registrations just opened up, and they are available via odafest.com slash oda-factor. Um, I don't know if <laughs> there's How, anything other is, than is go Shiracha and sing. Is Shiracha making a comeback? No, because Shiracha don't sing. <laughs> she dance. Yeah, but <laughs> but but she can lip sync. Yeah, but I don't think that's a part of it. No, this is legitimate singing. Yeah, oh. not illegitimate singing. Oh. All the rules and stuff are on the web page, so okay. you can just check that out and find out whether or not your performance is eligible. <laughs> yeah. The rule of thumb is if you if you would have been eligible to participate in Odafest Idol, you will be eligible to participate in this. Yep. Um. Oh. And also, as always, you can pre-purchase your single day weekend admission, or sorry, your single day or weekend admission at odafest.com. Weekend passes are on sale for $55. That's $5 off the door price. Use Save five, money. Yeah, use those five bucks somewhere else. Go, you know, Go if you... Go your favorite charity. Yeah, if you buy two passes, one for yourself and a friend, you save $10. Yo, the more passes you buy... The more money, the you, more save. money you save! <laughs> you might even be able to use that money to buy another pass. Wow! Can I just make a quick plug here since we're talking about Odafest things? Yeah. So this year we are also using a new app. Uh, there's not much on it right now, but the schedule, the maps, all of that will be on it. It also allows you to 
uh, receive updates if things change. We have a we're we're partnering with a new company called FanGuru. So if you want to download the app, it's available for Android, iOS, and you know if you want to use it on like on the web, that works too. It's just odafest.com slash app. Yeah, we've been looking at online options for quite a while because we're very picky. We are. We like are. we wanted to switch for a long time. Oh yeah, like we wanted to upgrade from yeah. just a scheduling app to have a more like yeah. full featured app set. So the app will have you know all the guest profile. They'll have all our exhibitors on it, all the artists, yep. the apps. We want to we want to maximize availability it. absolutely right and accessibility and like the truth is that our schedule events change yep. and like things are always sort of in fluid motion yep. when you're running a three day event that's filled with variables yeah right the app will always have the most up to date schedule and if things change it actually also allows us to send out push notifications which would be right. great to, to announce to people like oh this thing has changed maybe keep your eye out for yeah. it mm -hmm. um going back to the ota olympics but speaking of the real olympics i want to talk <laughs> about a certain little virus is it a coronavirus maybe no it's actually the covid virus now covid19 so first off stupid fun fact so when it was called just like coronavirus as the umbrella term yep. for the type of virus that it was, Corona, the beer company, legitimately got like queries arms. about oh. whether they were a part of like the why it was spreading and they were <laughs> getting really pissed. And then when they actually gave it a proper uh, name designation as a virus itself, right. uh, COVID-19, there's actually a some sort of like tech company that's called COVID. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And I think, I don't know how pissed they are, but I mean, you can't. You can't do anything about so that to a certain point. So the WHO actually went... The WHO! Yeah, the WHO. <laughs> they went through a lot of, like, a really big process to name this virus because, for instance, this virus is actually related to the SARS virus. Mm -hmm. And they were, originally, they were like, oh, we should call it SARS COVID-19, but they didn't want to incite, like, a public panic. About SARS again. About SARS again. The again. same way that SARS did but back the then. Big, the biggest issue about this right now is, like, I understand why people are panicked because, like, um... Nancy, I don't know if you have had any issues, uh, maybe you're from your family, but like I have, I still have family in, in Hong Kong and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like you can't buy those, like those face masks right now because they're yeah, like super sold out. Like the N95. Right. And they're like super, yeah, they're sold out. There's a huge shortage. And my mom actually has shipped over some to, oh, wow. from, from here. And it's actually not uncommon. Like uh, if you go to pharmacies here right now, I yeah. think that they're fairly low here because it's not people are stockpiling here. It's fairly low low risk, risk mm -hmm. um right. low caution uh, about that but mm -hmm. it is like sort of um people sending it to affected areas because they're running Family. low on supplies mm -hmm. and then if you're talking about like supply chain and running low china being a major manufacturing uh, uh center of the world probably outside from like what indonesia vietnam which are also areas that are being affected Right, like yeah. they, we're they, Taiwan, we're actually seeing a major um, downturn in uh, production of our regular, like everyday goods. You kind of like, like right. um, so first of all, like masks. Yeah, <laughs> they make those masks in China. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big, like, uh, uh, first world problem ones is hockey sticks, <laughs> because hockey stick you don't really buy that many throughout the course of a season. But like pro players, even like like uh, like Sidney Crosby or something like that. They only have like maybe a hundred a uh, hundred sticks a year or so hmm. that they really pre-allocate for themselves, but they don't buy them all at once. They just kind of get them as they need. Yeah, uh, like right. in groups of like five or ten or whatever. Right. And then, but they use maybe a stick a game, roughly. There's eight, about eighty-two uh, games a season, so it's they're running low on on stuff like that. Is that eighty-two games per team? Yeah, eighty-two games per team, and a player and and a team has. Uh, up to twenty-five players or so per a lot team. Of so that yeah. it adds up, and it's one of those weird things where it's like you you're starting to see. In case it snaps, right? Yeah, you're starting to see uh, uh, supply course. chain disruption. Right. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna see it, like be really bad in like they're really hoping that you know things don't change, uh, don't screw up everything. But right now, Tokyo is really not impressed with this because they have the <laughs> oh, actual yeah. olympics where you poured like probably a few billion dollars 
into you know venues and advertising rejuvenating spaces right and you know touristy places like right? some some of their very popular shrines were definitely under like a yeah. bit of reconstruction here and there right? Right. because like the 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 olympics are not ever really expected to make money but you have to at least try to bring in money back right like mm-hmm. try to break even right yeah. like i think when we were there last year even though it was like rugby world cup time mm-hmm. I think they were already advertising a lot of Olympic stuff. They were, yeah. No, they, they were because they were. I was in the Sky Tree Tower. I remember yeah, now, yeah. and I and I think I sent you photos of like they had like the big mascots and like an Olympic like stores and like they were really trying to push it. And I don't know, they're just like the super Olympic pissed. Is already on sale. Yeah. Like since September. And... Yeah, they're super unhappy with the state of things right now because there are some people who are like, yeah, you should go on with the show, and then. So people are like, it would probably be best if you don't because <laughs> you're gath- the problem is that you're gathering everyone to one place, but then they have to go home. So uh, same thing. Um, I just remembered that every year we have something called the Mobile Congress, which is a conference for mobile technologies. Right. And that was ca- formally canceled, I think, last week. And it was basically because all of the vendors have bowed out of the show. And Where is it based? I or where don't was it remember. Be I believe most of these conferences are usually down in like the San Fran area. Mobile conference? Mobile World Congress or something like that. Mobile World Congress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was formally canceled as of, I heard the news last week, but it could have happened any time before that. This is Barcelona. Barcelona. MWC Barcelona. There it is. That's crazy though. Yeah. So they announced that it was canceled because, you know, all of their big players who come into the show to, you know, show right. off new technologies they were all bowing out so. um and we we're just talking about well there's also like media that is being affected so mm. jay i'm sure you, you remember like, running man the show the korean show oh yeah. yeah so they had they were originally slated to travel to Man- uh, manila to yeah do a show that the but they ended up canceling it because of the COVID yep. virus. i actually ah. just watched the first episode of that uh it's a two-parter episode yeah i because i still keep with it um <laughs> They literally mentioned that they were they were going to travel, but they're not going to travel, and they just they they shot the episode in one of the broadcast buildings as the background uh, because oh, wow. they were like, we'll just keep everyone inside and away from crowds, um, even if it's like fans or whatever, because mm-hmm. they they will encounter fans during their shoots, yeah, and stuff like that. And they're like, nope, we're just not gonna. And I don't actually know how hard it's hitting like Korea, uh, you know, I think Japan. Just being abundantly cautious. Yeah, and Japan obviously has like that one. Um, cruise ship that they're yeah. that princess like, cruise ship yeah which is like 40,000 people or something on that thing did they uh, not just get let off out of quarantine yesterday or today maybe like, a week ago but I know some I think some individuals had uh, are going through an extended quarantine ah yes um, but the biggest thing about this is and it's been annoying me because um, I hate to say it again but like my mom said like uh, she was sending stuff over and then she's yeah. also like been more aware of it as a result mm. But she was like, you know, people are like really scared and it could be really, like a really big thing. And I'm, But the biggest concern is that it's because it's new and we don't know enough about it. But it's not doing that much damage. Like, yes, there have been thousands of people infected. But there are always diseases that infect thousands of people. Like, yeah. it's not that unique. Last I checked, the number of critical cases. So we're talking cases that have a fairly, I guess, high chance of being lethal is five percent and the and the average kill rate has been around two to three percent which is i hate to say it standard yeah it's like for a lack of better for a virus right and again it, like a lot of the folks that it's killed old people and sick people and children right like young but, uh some young children but not a lot yeah. but like again it's just one of those things actually no I, I read recently that there's some people or they think that young people have a slight immunity towards it which might be a good thing right? right but it's uh i don't know i i as someone who's like i'm not gonna say i'm that deep into medicinal science but i also have some background in it it's not that bad um and they're thinking that if we can't find a cure or a specific vaccine it just becomes the next flu or another something alongside the flu which like yeah another disease is not great but it's not you know the zombie outbreak it's not the well, the yeah, end of the world scenario you know and like you said it's it's big right now because it's new yeah people are always scared of things that are new and if you think of other diseases that have 
caused kind of a global panic, I guess. SARS, for instance, had a lethality rate of 10%. Right, but... Something around 10%. But they contained you it very to, well. You have to remember that when SARS was an outbreak, the internet wasn't as big of a thing. Yeah, that's true. People weren't being as forthcoming about it. I remember being told that when SARS first broke out, they were trying to keep it under wraps for a little while, and then it just well, broke out of control. That's the other sort of problem that people are concerned about is because it's, it's centered in Wuhan and China, and China doesn't exactly have the most transparent government. And there's been accusations of like they're covering up their numbers. bigger numbers, which is a concern. But again, it doesn't seem to like it's not like it has a one to one. Well, I mean, if you've ever played rate, right? Pandemic or which plaguing. we totally did yeah. the other night. Yeah, we did. Like playing pandemic or plaguing. Yeah. This is essentially a disease that has a very high infect infectivity or whatever they call it. Like infection in, rate. It's yeah. pretty high for infection, I guess. Because know, it has that whole, like, that two-week incubation period, which is yeah. normally standard, but also you can spread it during that period, which yeah. is sort of rare. And I mean, I'm not like a, I'm not like an epidemiologist, or yeah. like, I have no experience in studying the spread of viruses. But it's, it's interesting, right? I think right? that's pretty, like, it's not something to write it's about. It's not a plague. You know? like, yeah. It's not a plague. Um, speaking of pandemic, um, there's always games that people come back to play. Yep. Pandemic, we came back to play because, oh, not going to lie, of, of like this, which is sort of like... Uh, I think uh, it showed up on Steam as well that a lot of people suddenly logged into Plague Inc. Yeah, yeah so and... Plague Inc., which is the, the, essentially the, the spiritual successor to Pandemic, uh -huh. it, like their, their sales skyrocketed. <laughs> which is <laughs> like, it's definitely um, macabre, yeah. but like, it's, it's funny. But dude, it was like pulling teeth because we wanted to play the original Pandemic, oh. and because like Flash is on its way out, it was like pulling teeth trying to get that game to yeah. run. Oh jeez! But we did get it going, and then we did win. Yeah, we got Madagascar. We where did wow. we start? Greenland. We started in Greenland, yeah. For the winning one, right? And we infected Madagascar like yeah. second. Because it's always wow. Greenland and Madagascar that are um, jerks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking out for their people. Yeah. How dare they? Right? How dare? Uh, we got screwed so... by New Zealand once though. Oh. So on on that note, I guess are there any games or even books or like shows or any media that you guys always come back to, like either for nostalgia or because something's topical and it brings you back to it? I can tell you that everything is always nostalgia based because it's always something from my teen years. Really, always. Animorphs. <laughs> oh, Animorphs. Goosebumps. And I'm not saying I'm reading them so much. I'll just go on the Wikipedia page and sort of look up synopsis of like, mm. so, sort of like the issue or whatever. The, the stories that... Yeah. yeah. So that's like books. I used to read a lot as a kid. Yeah, um, shows, not so much. I don't really like rewatching shows. Really? They take too much time because it's a set. Like I can set how much and how fast I can read. But a show is basically at a row. Like if it's a thirty minute, it's a it's a twelve episode series of thirty minutes each. It's always going to take that I much. I can that argue. Long. So I can argue that if it's a favorite show that I've gone back to, I always like to pick and choose which episodes I want. I feel like watching. Um, Firefly, for example, is a show that I love watching from front to back okay. because I love the way it was written and the way they tell the stories and sure. the order they tell it in. Blah blah blah. But if we talk about something that's longer running, like TNG. I definitely have like my handful of favorites that I feel like watching at any given time, yeah. but I won't want to like watch all the way from season one to when it grows a beard to when this right. happens and then that happens and then. I find it quite liberating to to finish a series and rewatch it because I need something when I'm programming or when I'm coding to be, have in the background, and if it's something new that I haven't seen before, it's gonna take too much of my attention. Mm -hmm. So having it be a series that I've already watched, I rewatched basically all of Full Metal Alchemist, for instance, from wow. Netflix while I was coding for Odafest. So what and was... I was just in the background, so I wouldn't have to really pay attention. I could just look. Over I can't do anime. Now. I can't do anime as background. I Even though I'll watch like Running Man, but Running Man doesn't have a running plot point that I need right. to like be aware of or like sub subplots and stories like that. Yeah. But like if because it has subs and then I'll I'll want to read the subs. That's a, well, see, I get that, and that's why it has to be something I've already seen, like Full Metal Alchemist, or like right now. That's I've that's that's fairer, Lucifer. but I still but I still won't do it. How is Lucifer? By the I way? love Lucifer. Really it's a great series. I've... It gets kind of boring midway through, and oh. then it gets it gets better again. Right. In the newer season, but like I loved it when I watched it. I thought it was really like I thought it was funny, and I thought it was yeah. just the right amount of just kind of like wit, and I you know Tom Ellis is really hot, just. <laughs> 
as a person, as okay. a role model, and he has a British accent, so yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. And what's her face? That. Tom Ellis. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> I don't know who on, Tom Ellis is. on that oh. note, um, I agree that having something I've already seen be in the background when I'm trying to concentrate or do work or something is great. But on the flip side of that coin, it can't be something that I love too much. Because mm. if it's something I really hold beloved in my heart, I want to watch That's it. That's true. Um, but, like, anime is great because I don't know Japanese enough that if I, like, I, I'll miss most of the words if I'm not listening to it attentively. Yeah. Right. I hear a lot of it if I'm actually paying attention. But I, I'm not so tightly familiar with the language that I can just, you know, turn off my internal Japanese translation. And right. just, like, it just becomes noise. But, like, if I had Last Airbender going in the background, I will absolutely hear, like, a line because it's in English. And then I'll want to be like, oh, and I'm going to pay attention to this part where Sokka makes an idiot out of himself. Right. And then I'm going to go back to working. I'll write, like, a line of code. And then I'll be like, oh, and this is a top one. I want to see that. Yeah, that's yeah, not going to work. I could never rewatch Remember the Titans or Armageddon. Oh. Because I would be paying attention the <laughs> Too whole Too much. Time. The whole time. So here's the th- <laughs> I have two points on that kind of thing. Uh-huh. Number one, I will not, re- like I said, I will not rewatch a series because I think it's just, it's a road amount of time that it kind of requires and I, nothing I really do takes that much time or I cannot be listening to something else while right. I'm doing something else. Right. Um, I do like having background noise, but it's just because my work would be both audio in nature and that's not good. Yeah. Uh, number, the number one thing I, li- I do like to do is watching clips. Mm. I like watching clips from like, I watched... Um, some stuff from like Hey Arnold <laughs> or like oh, hey Rugrats Arnold. and stuff like that. Yeah. Just be- or like SpongeBob because they have some really funny bits, mm-hmm. and I just want to get that part. Yeah. But I don't care about needing the whole episode. Mm. Number two is on the topic of movies and like nostalgia. Uh, I've said it before, but I do not care if sequels are bad because I always have the original that was good. For case in point, there's like Jurassic Park. Where Jurassic World you might not love, or Jurassic Park three you know you might not love, but I still have Jurassic Park, and I I oh, don't no. need to like people who, for example, if you have like really angry feelings about Star Wars, for example, you oh. still have the original trilogy. You can you can say about like oh well all this stuff happened, and it's like yes, but in the moment of you watching like uh, uh, Return of the Jedi or something like that, right? You're just watching it for that. You're not trying to, like, unless you're really marathoning, I feel like, you don't have to connect all the threads. Right. You can just be like, this is the movie I wanted. This is what I like. And if we're talking about games, Final Fantasy VIII. Oh, I me, just I just started playing it again for the first time in so long. Right? Is there a Final Fantasy you haven't played? Yeah, I haven't played anything before seven. Yeah, I could say that. I started six a long, long, long time ago. And I didn't get very far in it because yep. it was back in the days where you kind of needed a guide to play through. Yeah, and I also Final haven't Fantasies. played any of the the MMO versions, so fourteen. No, right, I haven't played those either. Or eleven. I haven't played one, two, or three, five or six, and I want to play nine. It's on my Steam wish list. Really nine is oh. but so it good. never it never goes on sale, and I just want to buy it. You can just borrow it off mine, just, dude. I just have borrow it. it. I no, I just buy you. it. I want to. Um, but, okay, so point, like, so tell me, tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me. So. I, I played Final Fantasy VIII was my first Final Fantasy. Me too. And I had just started playing it after I traded my friend uh, my N sixty four for his PS one. Whoa! I definitely got the better end of that deal. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah. So I started playing it a bunch, and I loved it as a game. And lately, I've been getting more and more into speedruns and just watching speedruns on Twitch and just, you know <laughs> again just for like background noise oh. and and stuff to. <laughs> To do while I'm coding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I started watching Final Fantasy VIII speedruns, and I realized that there is a certain level of depth to the game that I'd never seen as a child. Certain like techniques or certain ways to do things, or like as a child, you never really understood the junction system, and an adult, you still kind of don't. I definitely understand it a lot better now oh, than I did the first time I tried to play the game. Yeah. Um, I I will actually I'm really curious. What is the fastest speed run you've seen? Because so I feel record. like I, mean, yeah, I feel like, like this the game record. is not the, that hard. Like yeah. The world record for Final Fantasy VIII, and we're talking an any percent world record, not a hundred percent run. Okay. Is about eight hours and ten minutes. Because Damn. the the biggest issue with uh, Final Fantasy games, for example, it's not about necessarily world breaking stuff. It's just still the the overall length of the game is still fairly yeah, great. Yeah, like. 
especially with like the FMVs, they add maybe like two hours right. on their own. Uns- like things that are unskippable. Yeah. Um, and in and eight, nothing help. was skippable in terms right. of FMVs. Yeah. Are there... The big thing is that you have to, it's really about efficiency and like playing perfectly as opposed to yeah. trying to find game breaking. Like, like there is a, like good button presses skips. and yeah. menuing is a big thing. There menuing is a menuing fucking is skill. Really and, and it has something to do with Final Fantasy. In general, menuing is. is a skill. Yes. And there are certain, like there's, for example, there's a Rhinoa skip that you can do where you never ended up actually meeting Rhinoa in the Timber you, mission. You, can you say Rhinoa. I say wow. Rhinoa. It's Rhinoa. Whatever. But whatever. I'm not here to judge. <laughs> anyway, you cannot meet her? So you can, yeah, you can walk straight through, I think it's Watts who's blocking the door. Uh-huh. And you can, if you make it through that door, then it skips right to the planning scene. And you don't, you don't have to go to the back of the train to find her. And you don't name Angelo. So Angelo's just by default Angelo. Okay, hold on. How do you... Is that a glitch? Getting through what? It is a glitch. Okay. It doesn't matter, though, because it's 90%. 90% okay, but doesn't does your game actually suffer without no. meeting Renoa? No, she's still in the no, no, party. No. Yeah. Okay. She just don't have, like, the... You, like, the, the character the, the, doesn't meet her story Yeah, the, the, oh. the, the flag isn't activated for just, like, the interaction, uh-huh. but the flag is set that it doesn't matter as long as you've gotten to this progress point. Exactly. That's funny. Yeah. I and wonder if anybody played that their first time and accidentally no, just, like, like, skipped through it. No, it's, like, very precise. Like, oh. Like, you have to, like... You have to go like diagonal for like three steps, and then you have to like go left for two steps, yep. and then you have, so, you kind of like wiggle your analog stick. Oh. In the in the world of speedrunning, um, tricks are not accidental, at least not anymore. No. Um, they literally have teams of essentially like researchers, or what do you? I, I guess you could call them almost like QA testers in a sense. They're trying to break the game in very precise ways, yeah. using either prior knowledge or just like they look through the code and they're like, "There's probably some sort of imperfection here that we could try." Yep, and that you can actually see that in practice when it yeah. comes to Zelda. So Ocarina of Time, right. they just came out with essentially a game-breaking um, new yeah. ACE, A stands for Arbitrary Code Execution. Wow. Which, where you can actually skip straight to the credits. Yep. Wow. And so the, the world record dropped from like 23 minutes yeah. or something to like sub-10 minutes, and they yeah. had to actually create a new category um, for Arbitrary Code both and, oh and non. I want to say that both the old uh, Link, to the, Link to the Past and Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow have the same, uh, call it, issue. Like, yeah. uh, basically, Missing you can break into the game. Yeah. No, it's, it's much earlier than Missing I think you can beat... No. Pokemon in like three minutes. Right. What? Sorry. What I meant was missing. No, was an example. Of, yeah. Of something that a. I think that's a, a router would look for. I think missing no is a result of a buffer overflow, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Okay, so going back to the whole nostalgia. Sorry, of yeah. Final Fantasy VIII. So. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Like, so, tell yeah, me. I have. Divin. Divin. I've dived. <laughs> I've dove. I've never <laughs> dove. <laughs> Doffed. Deeper into the Final Fantasy VIII wiki. Than while watching speedruns and being like, how did they do this? Or it's really nice because the streamers on Twitch, like mm-hmm. while they're mid run, there's definitely a certain scenes where like you know they're doing nothing, and mm-hmm. you can ask them a question, and they're all like really nice, and they will mm-hmm. answer and explain uh, the techniques to you. Some are nice, Sorry, some are not, because they get because the problem is that if they get new sh- uh, uh, fans and stuff, which right. is like what they want. But the problem is they get the same questions over and over you again. You can say that about fans of anyone, though. Yeah, but you like, have to understand that, like, for example, if you're, like, you know, being a voice actor, and then you're, you get questions about, like, maybe, how can I do this, or whatever. Your, who is your favorite role? But, what was your favorite this? Here, but here's the thing. None of your roles, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, like, you can tell me, but I don't think any of your roles are necessarily um, repetitive. Like, you're not going to be doing the same role over and over again. Whereas in speedrunning... That's all you're doing is something True. over and over and over again. You literally beat it into the ground. Definitely. And then you, you get asked skill. exactly the same question. I feel like in the same it. vein, like you're so used to doing something over and over and over, you would kind of be more desensitized to answering the same question over and over and over as well. Maybe. Uh, I, at I, the end of the day, it comes down to personality, right? Yeah, this but, is true. I, th- I think it's totally valid because, like, to be a little bit annoyed about it. Yeah. Just because it is, you know, a cycle of repetition. Sure. Like a very specific cycle of repetition. And I just, so, sorry, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I was going to say, I just think it's it was cool because the things I've learned from the world record speedrunner currently. Right. Uh, I've been able to, like, take, because I'm really into Final Fantasy VIII, so I'll, like, I'll <laughs> actually, I'll, I'll seek it out on Twitch, even if there's, like, a stream with, like, zero, like, viewers or whatever. Right. Like, I'll go and watch. And especially the viewer or the the players who don't mind 
kind of like the the backseat gaming or whatever. I won't like backseat game, but like I will tell them, hey, like I learned this while watching like blah blah blah. Like you can do this, or like I'll I've actually learned way more about the plot through diving into the all the wiki articles, really looking up like stats and stuff. Right. Yeah, it's really cool. This is I, a lens I've never looked at Final Fantasy through, and this really intrigues me. Or because, gaming, well, specifically. gaming specifically. I guess I don't watch speed runs a lot mm, I, I, I certainly like to watch like when friends of ours are doing speed runs but i i guess it's not something i go seeking out uh, in the same vein as bayfire i was looking at speed running either pokemon red blue yellow or world but at the end of the day i just do not have the time it takes to keep on doing like the repetition and then like true. getting so into it so... like at I, one point, I wanted to start getting getting into yeah. speedrunning eight, and then I was like, "This is not worth the effort." <laughs> but now, like having watched so much, I still like I really am getting this itch to just like stream regularly playing through eight. Speedrunning or just like playing just through regularly it. playing through because now I know like all of this like new stuff and like the new ways that I can like combine certain techniques. Huh. Like when I, when I say techniques, I just mean like literally like the the character's abilities. Like, like making oh. it like, the, like for example, did you know like if you have the character in the middle of your party during a fight, if they have both cover and counter and they have a certain like resist you, you junction a certain like magic to resistance yeah they will essentially protect your entire party from physical attacks and yes. take zero damage in the process yes and then counter attack every time yes right i did know about that so yeah. i didn't realize that cover only did the adjacent so it had to be the person in the middle it had the to be the person yep. in the middle if yep. you wanted them to be the most like successful or effective right yep. like yeah no I, I did know about that oddly enough um for for me i okay so flashback to the first time i ever played final fantasy 8 sure i loved it so much i stopped partway through the first disc mm -hmm. because i realized that these things called fmbs would happen regularly in the story i started back at the beginning mm -hmm. i was absolutely okay with starting over from scratch again and just throwing away my progress sure because by by the time i had gotten that far into disc one i realized that i wasn't doing things as effectively as i could be and oh. and I wanted to have save points right before the big FMV so I could go back and see them again. Ah, yes. I oh, that. that's interesting. I ended up with, I think, nine save points that were specific For to the really FMVs? the major FMVs. Like, not right. the little ones, but like the major ones. Like, the beginning when you're going off to your first mission. Mm -hmm. And the one with the parade. And then, the you know, all of the really, really big ones. I wanted to be able to go back and watch them again. What does FMV stand for? Full motion video. Is it? Yes. Because, so, like, because, like, it means now it means like fan music well, video or something days, like that. Yeah, I that's true. I was just I, like, I, I couldn't remember what the original thing was. So this might be dive, diving maybe a little too deep into Final no, no, Fantasy. No, 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 no. I want to hear this for you know listeners who don't know or never played the game. But what would you say your favorite FMV in that game is? My favorite. Uh, that's I have one hard. That's hard. Um, I really like the cipher one. Which the cipher one? in the in the in the. Like the Arc de Triomphe, kind of like the the parade. Oh, the parade. Yeah, yeah. I actually really like that. And that that actually funny you should mention Arc de Triomphe. It was modeled after the Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. Yes. That's why I would call it that. I'm like yeah. I don't actually know what the name of the location is. <laughs> That's Daling City. No, no, no. But I mean like the. Oh yeah, yeah. Arc de Triomphe. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have sort of two favorites. Sure. There's one that's a really short one that is not necessarily part of the story, but mm -hmm. you see it if you go visit Renoa up on the ledge, at on the at the garden. Okay. And it's it's like completely optional. If you don't go visit her in the classroom, you never see it. Okay. But it's the one where you go up on the balcony and she's just up there watching the birds because they're flying, and ah, she yes. turns around and smiles at you. Right. That one. So um, they actually do a callback to that at the very end of the game too. Ah, uh, they do? Wait, the very know. end of the... I'm not going to spoil it. No, okay. the fact that the game's like 20 um, years old. But like... I think the end of the game is definitely my favorite. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I can't, like, you know, that's kind of an obvious yeah. the choice. The credits, the credits were my favorite the cre FMV. <laughs> yeah, the end of the game was right. definitely my favorite FMV. But, like, you know, for the ones that are in the middle, yeah. um, definitely the parade. The parade. The parade's really high the, up there. And what happens as a consequence of the parade. Ah. Yes. Be before Bayfar goes on his, I want to also add, I really like meeting Idea. Yeah, that's I a really the, cool scene. Because I just, I love the music for the scene. Which? The dad, like the, the, there's really... Are we talking about the like one Renoa goes to... Yes, okay. that one. 
because yeah. you you see her like resting or something, and then she yeah. wakes up. She on a chair. And, I, yeah. and again, I just and it's love. I, I love, love the it. music setting for it. Like it's her theme. Eight. But it's just amazing. really. Eight had good. an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. I used to listen to it on loop all the mm. time, and I still do when I work. Yeah. What did you What did you have, Bayfire? For? My favorite one is mm-hmm. when you're in the Ragnarok and you attack Lunatic Pandora. Yes! Because it's the ship, and you're like, you know, ships have guns, so you're like, you're shooting at the ships thing. Ships have guns. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> and like, it, like it penetrates the shield and it starts like shooting at the 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 structure itself. Yeah. And then they, you know, obviously, like it has a main cannon, so it shoots the main cannon. Right. It gets into the Ragnarok, and then out of nowhere, this spaceship. Pulls out a fucking claw, and it's like, Grrr! and it's just like a fucking dragon, essentially. Yep. Just in this building, it's like climbing yep. in. Yeah. And when did the ship become a dragon? I don't know. I guess it always was. Yeah. I guess so. And that is the magic of Final Fantasy. Also, if my... the next cruise ship I go on isn't a dragon, uh, I You're want a living. refund. Yeah. Okay. And then my, I guess the one that I question the most right. is in space, where Renoa is, and notice I, try, I changed my pronunciation for you. Please, <laughs> you don't feel the need so, to. It's okay. By the way, I've already decided that's going to be the episode title. Oh, yeah. no. It's Renoa, it's not Renoa. Renoa. Oh. <laughs> I only say that because her name was supposed to be Lenore. Ah, I see. And it's so, Lenore. It's Lenore. Lenore. It was Lenore, and then they... Well, there you go. Anyway, it was supposed to be Lenora, and then they, you know, they they Japanified right. it, and yeah. it was Renoa. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> so you're in space, and Renoa, you know, she gets possessed, and then she releases Adele, uh-huh. and then she like Ultimicia, <laughs> and then she starts singing Skyfall <laughs> and uh, rolling in the Actually, deep. Actually, it's kind of it's really apropos. Right? That she would be singing Skyfall. I know, but. <laughs> so Renoa, and then Ultimisia essentially releases Renoa from her grasp, yep. and Renoa is just kind of drifting in space. Yep. Yeah. And her life support ends. Yeah. And then she has, you know, she's thinking about Squall because uh, Alone sends Squall to Renoa's. I guess the way they worded it was the nearest past to the future, which really means like a second ago. Yep. So Squall is just kind of in Renoa's closest possible time frame, kind of like going through her thoughts or whatever. And then, like, throughout the game, you understand, like, when she sends you to the past. You can kind of affect it. You can essentially like kind of like communicate with the person through their thoughts and whatever. And then Renoa just presses a button, which is like backup life support <laughs> on, her sh- on her suit. Press the yeah. backup button. Oh, I totally God. forgot about this. After the whole suit's like life support zero. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, just kidding. I had this button, button right for backup. here. I guess I Rewind button. I could also argue just... that she's not exactly a trained astronaut. She was kind of possessed. But I mean, in the same in the same way, the game didn't really have to do that. And they could have not done that to really drive the point home that sorceresses can't die until they pass on their powers. Ooh, Which yeah. is why they never killed Adele. It's why they imprisoned Adele. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good point. Like that that could have been such a better plot to oh. reinforcer than Yeah. Like... Yeah. No, you're totally right. Anyway, I started just last week to play eight again and remastered or the, original? the HD remaster. It's been Wait, a time. Uh... It's been a time because Yeah, the one on the, Steam, right? The yeah, backgrounds the, ones, yeah. the backgrounds are exactly the way I remember them, but blurrier, obviously, because the last time <laughs> yeah, I played this... the background. No, no. no. You didn't time... know this, but you got LASIK. No. <laughs> you got LASIK and everything. How? No. Uh, the, fir- the last time I played this was with a CRT screen, right. so it's not like I could have been able to tell. Right. And like, since they've upscaled just the models and the menus, by the way, the yep. menus really threw me off because now all of a sudden everything's like an aerial font, but like super nice and smooth. And there's an exit option. And there's an exit option, which didn't exist. But like, okay, number one... Um, I've been spoiled by the fact that in 10, all you do is walk up to a save point and you just hit X and you start saving. Right. Now you have to go into the menu, go down to save and save. Go up <laughs> the other one is, I know I do that, but you still have to go into the menu. Right. Um, the other one is I that remember when back when I had, a I had to answer one. a passcode oh. after every Mega Man boss. <laughs> but actually, I remember when I had the PlayStation and you had analog directions to run in. Like oh, yeah. I've actually oh, noticed, yeah. I've actually noticed that yet yeah, you are locked into eight directions to run, yep. which kind of screws up the tank. When you're in the first mission and you're getting chased by the oh. tank, there's oh, a the very XATM. specific way. Yeah. There's a specific way for you to run down every path on each yes. screen so yes. that it can't catch you. And I can't do any of those anymore because your path is now not lining up with those eight directions. Well, maybe you can it's because run. you're not young anymore. That's actually... Youth. Kind of true. 
true. It's relevant. I mean, it, yeah. it was just weird because I remember when you used to run around in like Ballum Garden or whatever, you had full control of exactly what degree you were running in, and now you're locked into eight directions. Is so that have you have you is that not a like something in the menu? That you can change? No, it menu? is not. Really? It took I'm, me be- watching a speedrun to realize that the directory in Ballum Garden could teleport you to that area. Really? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. Oh, no. I didn't know that. All I literally don't know hours. that right now. Yeah. I pl- I've played 8 like only twice through. Like I, I do like it a lot, but uh, like it's sort of the same reason. I try not to play that many things through either because it's going to take that much time. Mm. And I have perfectionist like syndrome yes, when I especially when i replay a game oh yes i have this really bad <laughs> habit of replaying a point over and over again until i Get mentally right. allow myself to be perfect right. but i don't right. have that problem so much when on the first playthrough because i'm like i allow myself to be imperfect mm. But that's, just exploring. but that's yeah. literally why I restarted the game yeah. after getting like part way into disc one. Right. I was like, nope, you know what? I'm going to start over. It my, starts from scratch. My first playthrough when I was a child, when I played this game for the first time, I beat the game with the three starting Guardian Forces. I did wow. not know you could acquire you... more. Oh, no. Like one of the first things and that they do. I never paid attention to the tutorials. Why would I do that? Oh, I don't know. Because you don't know how to play the game and it's new and terrifying. And look like at all these 12. menus. Okay. Yeah. So, no excuse. So you <laughs> clearly were not good enough. Not only did I only play with the three starting guardian forces, that's but insane. all three of them were only on Squall. <gasps> no. So everyone else no, no, that's had... like a yo. That's like that's Final Fantasy VII shit, where like you're like yo, Aerith is my only healer. I'm pr- like I'm putting good shit on her. And then she gets <laughs> whacked. Yeah. <laughs> what? And then it's gone. That's not what I was referring to at all. What happened? What? (laughs) What? (laughs) Anyway, so things I've noticed. While replaying through 8, I play with Sean, obviously. And I will... I will tell him things that he'd just be like, that is straight up bullshit. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, how was I supposed to know that you earn familiarity with your GF if you don't, yeah. like, if you don't summon them enough? <laughs> you like, gotta are flirt you tell- with your girlfriend. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta junction your girlfriend. Did but you it's- know? What? Just on that. Sorry yes? to no, cut you off. tell me. Did you know that summoning GFs in yes. battle uh-huh. contributes to lowering your seed rank and salary in the overworld? Uh, Why? Only You're... in the overworld? Hold on. Well, like, so yeah, so like you know how you get like your your seed rank, and then yeah. you get like paid a certain amount yeah. every once in a while. Yep. Yeah, your salary. So there, it's essentially there's a there's an invisible counter for points for and against, and if uh-huh. you have enough points against, you go down. If you have enough points for, you go up. Yep. So cool. one of the things is you have to like a a major four is if you between two salaries, if you win ten battles. If you run from battles, then it decreases. If you use GFs, it decreases as opposed to, like, regular attacks. Huh. But if you're fighting, like, bosses, it doesn't decrease, I take it? Uh... No, I mean, like, it'll, it'll still but count against said... if you use a GF against a boss. He said in the overworld, so only when you're doing random yeah, when encounters. Yeah, when you're just round, random encounters. Yeah. You don't usually yeah. run into bosses just What's in the What's the overworld? top out for salary, do you know? Uh, uh Nine? So C, I think C yeah, I know, rank I mean, level like, is C... like nine and then A. No, it goes to twenty nine and then A or thirty and then A. Christ. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forget now. I mean, I only just started last week, but it's, it's been just time. It's just like real world. It's performance bonuses and it really is. And you then know. you can take you know you can take a test to right. increase it artificially, but right. Once right. you burn out, once you burn through all the tests and your rank decreases, you can't just take the test again. Hmm. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> well, it's yeah. It's Renoa. It's Renoa. <clears throat> not Reno- Not Leviosa. Not Leviosa. Go play Final Fantasy VIII if you haven't. Yeah. Come reminisce with us. Find out why time. it's the best Final Fantasy. <laughs> it's definitely the, it's a, of the older generation Final Fantasies, it's the biggest love-hate one. Yeah, really? really I know a lot of people complained about the junction system, but I honestly liked it. It, it works. Junction and draw, draw system. And the people fact really that the, like the enemies level up with you. Only if Squall is alive in your party and you level him. That's your average party level. You, you, can, you can keep your... No. It, all the monsters actually scale to Squall's level. So... No. That can't be right. Pretty sure it's Squall's level. Okay, now I'm going to have to Wikipedia this. All right, then. Well, <laughs> Let's you can do that. that now because we're leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.